This is the evil chicken in question who likes foam. All right, pretty nice day here today. It was minus 10 yesterday, but as you can see, we got melt happening today. And so I decided what better thing to do than to fire up the smoker. We got a uh, butt, we've got a picnic, and we got a couple of goat legs here. And so uh, that's gonna be our meat for the next couple of weeks taken care of. Oh, hello girls. How we all doing, enjoying the sun today? Are we? I gotta get another bag of shavings out here because the barrels are getting some build up there. I scraped them off the other day. But they're get, they hang out up there and they knock down all the shavings all the time, so I gotta keep putting fresh shavings up there for them to sit in. So everyone seems pretty happy still. The ground is a little bit moist because it's so hot here today, but I got the door wide open, so we're getting loads of ventilation still. Uh, you can probably kind of see the, it's a bit misshapen. So one job I got to do today, is you can see most of the, uh, most of the zip ties held up perfect. However, when we had that push in yesterday, or a few days ago from the, uh, from the side, the zip ties on this pair did bust. So I'm gonna have to fix those. Another thing I've got to do is I got to get some more feed bags poked in on the corners because where is she? She must be outside. One lovely chicken has it eaten way up to there. Now that barrel, from that barrel up to that height is about at least 30 inches. So he's jumping off of that barrel up to that just to pick off the, the foam. This is the evil chicken in question who likes foam. But uh, we got a such nice day today that, uh, you know, I want to be out doing a few jobs. It's getting crowded in there. All right, the girls are in there in the last corner, so I'm going to leave them be. I got the top covered with a different one. I don't know if it's coming out in the mic, but there's all kinds of songbirds out today. It's making me start thinking I should probably have those maple trees cast. <laughs> Look at these chickens. So I put out these last three bags of leaves I have to dry them out a little bit in the sun and they're fighting to try to crawl inside. I really think he's gonna lay an egg in there. Ooh, that ruffled your feathers. And we had some little chicken feet come out to the old former compost bay. They must have been nostalgic. I can't believe how spring-like it feels today. Oh man, I'm ready for it. And here's our compost pile. No snow on that. Obviously that did a pretty good job of keeping its heat. So there's the old compost heap. I don't know where the thermometer is exactly. Yeah, obviously it still must have some heat. That, uh, that cleared off pretty fast from the snow. Here's the other door of the greenhouse that I kind of partially blocked in with the pallets. But you can see how deep the snow is there. But I'll open up the top door to get some extra drying action happening here. Oh, the, the warm air coming out of there is real nice. So here's the problem. One problem with the greenhouse design is that the floor keeps getting higher. The doors that had the, uh, you know, three, four inches clearance or whatever, I put 30 bags of leaves in here. I've been throwing our food scraps in here, which absolutely just disappear. So obviously there's still like, must be lots of good microby stuff still happening even though it gets pretty cold outside. Uh, but all that material has to build up, obviously. So what ended up happening is our doors get harder to open as time goes on. But that's some nice deep bedding, isn't it? Beautiful. Yeah, another successful smoking day. Nice smoke ring there, eh?
We have had what you would call a fool's spring, which will come every year, and every year I'll deny that it's happening. A fall spring is actually when it does get so warm that the plants actually think that it's spring and then they bloom and then they get very damaged because they're not prepared for the winter and when it gets really cold then their structures can't handle it and they suffer. A full spring is when a human being thinks that winter's over and they get really excited about it and um, they're just a fool because it's obviously our last frost date is in June. So this is a fool's spring. It's fine. It's really beautiful out here though. It's actually really nice out right now. I'm coming in to see the ladies. Let's go my friends. Wow, you guys look great. What? They've been making a dust bath. That's hilarious. Oh, they got two. Look at that. There's a dust bath here and a dust bath there. In honor of fool's spring, I'm gonna take you around and tell you what some of our plans are for real spring. Since we're in the greenhouse, in here, the chickens will be gone. We'll be removing the chickens. They're gonna go back out to their coop. And in here, we are gonna have tomatoes, peppers, jalapenos, maybe a couple of other things, but I'm gonna try to keep it real simple this year um, because it didn't go super well last year and I wanna just focus on a few different plants. I know that you can't see it, but down here on this side of the driveway, that is our chicken tractor. It is totally covered in snow, but come May, it is going to be traveling across our front lawn. That's what we did last year. This is our house, woo -hoo. This is our house, we have an acre cleared, and the chickens move across, fertilize the grass, and they grow to big beautiful chickens. Dominic's trying to make a path so he can, he can get some work done. Down here, we are gonna have some sort of livestock. We had the goats, we had the pigs in here first, and then we had the goats in here, and I'm not sure what we're doing next year, but we're gonna have some sort of livestock in here. As you can tell, we plan things out really, really well, and well in advance. I have no idea what's gonna, I have an idea, but we're not exactly sure yet. Nothing is secured. We usually secure things within 48 hours before we get them. Moving on. Ooh. These. This is the start of a building project. We're going to be getting livestock and it needs a barn to live in. So Dominic's cutting down trees. This is our vegetable garden, the outdoor garden. The plan for this is potatoes, onions, carrots, peas four things, maybe a few other things thrown in between, but we're gonna put as many carrots, potatoes, onions, and peas as we can in here, because um, we're gonna keep it simple. Keeping it very, very simple this year. We've realized we loved the carrots last year. We didn't, the potatoes didn't go in the ground early enough. They didn't take, and we need to do that again. That brings us to the backwoods. All right, this is the remnants of the pig shelter. Dominic moves the pigs through our backwoods. They help us turn this woods into pasture. And what he does when he gets them back there is every, every place he puts them in, he gets a shelter and he builds it for them himself, free with like wood and logs from the land and whatever he has in, from the shed. My dad gave us a giant bucket of uh, metal things. And so every once in a while we kind of dig in there and look for stuff. But, out in these backwoods, we have got, we haven't really been very far um, out here. We cleared about an acre and a quarter last year, and the plan is to clear more next year. So we have perimeter fencing that goes around, and I think that we're gonna put another gate in and extend back. We're gonna start cutting more trees. Now that we have the tractor, we have a means to get a lot of the logs back in, so that's the plan. You can see down the perimeter of our lawn here, that's our garden. Out in the front is where the chickens are gonna be moving around. But down along the edge are some maple trees. Last year we tapped these maple trees, we made maple syrup. This year we're gonna tap them again. We did cut down 
this beautiful maple tree, which is the biggest one that we had there. Um, and I think this year another maple tree is going to go as well. But we do have more maple trees out in the back. There's actually a grove not far from here. Oh, there is a maple grove not far from here um, on our property, but you have to go out every single day and collect the water. You can't leave it there. Um, so one of us has to do that. We do work full time and then we get home and it's, you know, it's hectic with the kids and we're gonna have to decide whether or not we want to do that because it's still gonna be snowy and stuff. Um, if we were here full time and we didn't work, absolutely, I'd be tapping as many trees as I could, but we gotta be reasonable, which is what we learned the most last year. Last year was our first year doing this, um, but we have to be reasonable. And I think you need to find a good balance between reasonable, I keep falling down through the snow. You need to find a, keep a good balance between reasonable and um, ambitious. I think that's the plan. And I think Dominic is uh, demonstrating that now. He's trying to dig a path into, <laughs> into the backwoods so he can take his tractor in. I didn't think it was gonna work. All right. So if I had to know I was getting the tractor this year, there's a couple of things I would not have done in the fall. I wouldn't have piled up all my wood over here because that really narrows out the space between here's the fire pit log, the bench, and there's the fire pit there. So it really limits me in terms of how wide it is. Now the tractor does fit in here. And the other thing I would have done is move that house down further. So if you'll remember, when I was going around and scrounging up all the compost I could find at the end of the fall to make a big pile, I, I just pulled that house down a little bit further to get the hay that was in there from the goats. And I was pulling it by hand, it wasn't, it's not the easiest thing to move by hand over rough ground. Uh, and uh, I should have pulled another full length away because now I came in here with the tractor. So you can see how frozen, like the snow underneath this top layer of powder. The powder is what we got last night. And then underneath here is just rock, absolute <laughs> rock of ice. Uh, so it was great that she came up over that kind of unsteady bank and she cleared all this out in a sweat. And I noticed, because I've seen this guy sticking up. He was sticking up like this. And I thought, oh, good test for the tractor now. So I just leveled the bucket off low and just ran it over and it cracked right off. So all these little stumpy things that are here, when all this snow is gone, I'm just going to be able to put the bucket down level and pull them right out, I think, with the bucket, which is great. Uh, but anyway, once I got in here, uh, I don't have a lot of room to make that turn with the bucket. And uh, I was getting real close to hitting the gate and getting real close to hitting the post on the other side. So I decided probably it's not the best idea. Plus when I started, I didn't think the snow was still this high. It still must be a full, I don't know, definitely two feet. I thought it was about half as much as that because it doesn't look as high next to the post for some reason. But uh, if you can see, I'm standing here, the logs that I got piled up are at chest level. So over there, the snow is even deeper. So I don't think it's really productive to come in here with the tractor just yet. I need another couple of real good thaws, a lot of melt to compact it down further. And then I need it to freeze really hard. Because what I don't want to do is come in here when it's wet and rip up all the grass that we planted last year. Anyway, I had fun, played with my tractor, put a few more hours on it. All right, okay guys. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye. And hands, they call them. Yeah. You know, the funny part about this is it's not so bad until you stop and then it's like, oh, I left them in there way too long. It doesn't hurt until you take it out after a couple seconds. I never do this. For my chickens, Jennifer, I'm willing to make the sacrifice. I'm do that for my own children. Of cold fingies for one second.